I have a few packages to deal with. And a bunch of unanswered questions, like what happened to the 18 hours of footage on those mini DV tapes from Canada? And are we still doing a day of logging on a crappy camera? I, I have answers for all of these. So today, we're gonna do a Q&A. Because you guys have been sending me a lot of questions, and I want to answer them. But first, let me talk about the boxes. This is actually really neat. So you guys remember that last vlog that I did where I ended up in Harajuku, ended up blowing out a Harajuku secret for you guys, and then ended up somewhere really exciting. It'll be linked right there. At the end of that vlog, I talked about how that train was way too crowded and I needed a better way to get around Tokyo. This company, SoFlo, contacted me hours after the release of that vlog and was like, hey, we've got some stuff we want to send you. And they sent me everything. You can probably see that this one here is a skateboard. All of this is mobility stuff. First and foremost, they sent me this crazy motorized scooter. You push this down here. And she goes fast. And it's got this little light for getting around Tokyo safely. I may show this later. One of the reasons I'm not really showing it right now is because it, it's bright pink. It's odd enough going around the city on a scooter. Thank you guys very much, by the way. But it's bright pink. It's not really the other thing they sent me. Is this skateboard here? It's called the Lou board. Since I usually scoot around Tokyo on a penny board anyway, because it's easy to get around the city, that's well sized. But here's the cool thing about it. Wasn't expecting that. They also sent me this really neat backpack to carry the board. And as psyched as I am to have a new transportation method around Tokyo, I, I don't really think I'll be vlogging on the board because, well, there, you know, it's been done. Anyways, let's clear some of this away. And I'm sorry I didn't unbox them on camera. I was just too excited. I will unbox next time. Yeah, it feels better. First and foremost, the mini DV tapes. I have over 18 hours of Japan footage from my very first trip to Japan back in like 2005 that I found in my basement in Canada. If you haven't seen it, it's linked below. It was all shot on this camera here, but I couldn't find the charging cable for the camera while I was in Canada. So when I got back to Japan, I dedicated an evening to go out to one of my favorite little spots in Akihabara and see if I couldn't find the charging cable. As always, I've come out to my favorite spot. I feel like if I'm gonna find it anywhere, it'll probably be here. Gozaimashita. Love this place, man. Every single time. Nailed it. Everything's closing down. I'm gonna get locked in here if I don't hurry. <laughs> the good news is I found the charging cable and it works beautifully with the camera. The bad news is that the camera just chews up the tapes. It's just too old. It doesn't work. Now a new friend that I made while I was in Canada named Brian who actually works for a major camera shop had recommended that I get them digitized. I have something interesting in store for these so Paying someone to digitize them may be the best choice. Thank you for that tip, Brian. Thank you. Additionally, for those asking if we are still gonna be doing a day of vlogging on a cheap camera, yes, we are. In fact, I was hoping to box off two birds with one stone. I went out to a used goods shop called Hard Off here in Tokyo and grabbed myself a little point and shoot for like, I don't know, it was like 4,000 yen or something. They should have some cameras in here. The goal was within 5,000 yen. I found a camera for 4,000 yen. 4,320 yen and we have a crappy camera. I got it home, super excited to start the vlog with it. Tested it and the audio doesn't work. We'll get back to that one. We will be doing it. I think that's the majority of the updates. If I've missed anything, if I've left anything hanging that I haven't answered, just obviously ask it below and I will let you know. But it is time to get into today's Q&A. You guys have asked some really good questions. These questions have spanned all my platforms ranging from YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, so thank you all very much. I'm gonna do my best to answer as many of them today 
as I can. I'm gonna start with the big one. Would you ever do a meetup? Or are you planning on going to the YouTube Hanami this year? A meetup I would absolutely love to do. I've got some interesting things in store for summer-ish. But if I'm gonna be doing something, I wanna make sure that whatever we're doing is gonna be really fun and interesting. So just bear with me on that. As for the YouTube Hanami, I have gone to actually every YouTube Hanami for the last maybe four or five years. I'm hoping to go to this year's YouTube Hanami, obviously weather permitting and providing that nothing comes up. Um, that really feels really non-committal. Sorry, I plan on it. Do you have any pets? Not in Japan, but in Canada, I have several cats. I've had cats most of my life. My father was breeding dogs for a while, so I've done the whole dog thing, I've done the cat thing, I've done the fish thing. Have I owned any exotic pets? I haven't owned anything crazy. I don't own any pets in Japan. The primary reason being that I spend so much time out that I wouldn't really be able to give good care, but I have done bonsai trees and bamboo and everything like that. What chore did you hate as a kid? Doing the dishes. I still hate dishes. What does a day in your life look like? It's actually a pretty good one. I did one day where I, I tested the water and I saw what it would feel like to do like a daily vlog. I'll link that one right here. Most days usually follow a, a similar flow to that. That particular vlog was a test for myself to see if I could handle daily vlogging. It's something that I may try at some point, just a regular daily vlog. Would you watch every day? This one's important to me. Is Japan wheelchair accessible? This is, uh, I'll probably go into this in a lot more detail later on. This is a question that actually holds a lot of personal connection to me. So it's a topic that I'm really interested in. It's something that I've always kept my eyes out for. Now I could give you my answer straight out right now, but I actually found an article by Time Out Tokyo. I just tweeted it the other day. So if you're not following me on Twitter, boom, there's a chance right there. But I'll also link it below for those of you who don't do Twitter that covers the topic really well, I think. I will come back to that and I will hit it with depth when we do, because that is an important topic. Do you watch anime? I have watched anime, of course. Actually, my little brother, Alexander, Alexander is a huge anime fan. Like, I've never seen anybody collect more anime and watch more anime than him. We've been out to conventions together and everything. Actually, the first time that I met the Yoshida brothers, the Shamisen players, was at an anime convention that my little brother had dragged me out to. Tons of fun. Additionally, when I was learning how to drift cars, I didn't know how to really talk the language, so I watched pretty much all of Initial D, a car anime, so I could pick up the language. Have you watched that new Japanese movie, Your Name? No, I haven't, but my little brother is planning on coming to visit me this summer, and if he likes anime that much, it's always more fun to watch things like that when you're with somebody who loves it. So I'm gonna watch it with him. These next two questions are from the same person, but I, I think they're both really important questions. The first part of the question is, is it possible to build a career as a musician in Japan? I think it is. I, I actually, I have several friends who are successful musicians here in Tokyo. They also do shows around the country. I myself am moving closer and closer and closer to starting to make a lot more of my life about the shamisen, an instrument that I play, with the hopes of eventually being able to release something instead of just doing live shows. Even in the last couple years, I've done countless performances, I've been on TV for it a couple times, and I was the opening scene to a movie. So short answer, yes. That wasn't really a short answer. The second part of the question is, I'm 29, I'm 29, is it too old to move to Japan? No, it's not. I'm not gonna get into a whole it's never too late rant. It's been done, there's a thousand of them out there, but I really believe it. It's not too late. 29 is a good age. 
Next one. Do you have any experience with street photography? What a well-timed question. This is something that I'm just recently starting to get a little more into, thanks to a good friend of mine named Lucas, who runs this photo adventure tours here in Tokyo. I'm gonna link his website. It's called I Explore. There was a second part to that question. The second part of that question was, do you have any tips? Yes, check out iExplore. In addition to doing these little photo adventure tours where they teach you about street photography and how to use your camera and everything like that, they also have started a YouTube channel. What Lucas is teaching through his YouTube composition or how you can get a wider scene and have a person in the distance or using reflections and stuff like that. Lucas is probably one of the photographers that inspired me the most to get into street photography. In fact, one of the first episodes of this vlog itself was with Lucas. He took me out to do some night street photography and it was a ton of fun. I think I'm gonna post the photo from that night on Instagram. Well, okay, these next two questions are just really nice. Would you be interested in allowing someone to paint one or more of your Instagram photos? Would you really want to do that? Wow, well, thank you. That, thank you. Yes, I would be interested in that. This one has actually come up a few times now. Are you gonna sell, are you going to sell prints of your photos? I'd like to. Leave that in the comments for me. Like if I was selling prints of my photos, is that something you would want to have on your wall? Actually, there's one or two I'd like to have on my wall. Like this one. Love that photo. Actually, it took a lot of work to get that one. Coffee break. I might need your help with this next question because someone asked, is that Wi-Fi thing any really good? For those of you who don't know what he's talking about, um, this company, this company here, iVideo had contacted me a while back and was like, hey, we've got this really cheap Wi-Fi that's also really fast. Would you like to try it out? And I was like, sure, I'll give it a shot. I've been using it since maybe November or December of last year. It's February now things become like my main Wi-Fi but it seems that so many of you have actually been like yeah it is the cheapest I can't find anything cheaper I'm really excited I'm so glad that I could bring that value to you but then I don't hear anything else for those of you who have tried the iVideo Wi-Fi is it is it like it obviously mine is good was yours good answers below what's the story behind the bridge Okay, so for those of you who don't know what this one is about, I, I think it was in one of Sharla's vlogs actually. We kind of crossed this bridge near Akihabara and I said that, that I had a very, very deep personal connection to that bridge and that it was a story that I wasn't ready to tell yet. Still not ready to tell it. There is, there is an exact time that I will be telling this story and that the time is, is approaching. Hold tight. There is an amazing story coming behind that bridge. Was that a Fire King mug? You mean this mug here? Yes, it is. This mug is pure gold. It was a gift from my grandmother because I collect Fire King and Pyrex cups and mugs. I just I love these things. Can't get enough of them. This next question was a long one and I'm, I'm gonna paraphrase it. It's basically about learning Japanese endeavors. People saying that it is too hard to learn Japanese and it's not that useful. Have you encountered doubters like this? Yes, I think all of us. It doesn't matter what choice you make in life, it doesn't matter what you pursue in life, there's a pretty good chance that someone's gonna doubt that, but I'm not gonna give a general answer on this one. I'm gonna focus on the Japanese language. I've got a few different views on this and it starts with your personal interests. Personal development is supposed to be something that you enjoy, that makes your life better. Learning something will always lead to something else. 
Learning something is really just opening a door to an unknown room. You think you have an idea of what's in that room, but once you open it, there could be stuff in there you never imagined. Learning Japanese, you could learn a lot about yourself. I know I did. Learning the Japanese language, the Japanese way of thinking, which is tied into the language, is so different from me. My personality is very distinctly non-Japanese, and so learning the Japanese language gave me an entire range of new ways to approach and think of things. When I speak Japanese, I have a uniquely different personality than I do when I speak in English. My Japanese friends always say, oh, you are so different in Japanese than you are in English. You can learn a lot about the world and a lot about yourself by learning any language out there. That being said, you may get right into it and you may chase Japanese for the rest of your life, or you may chase it for two to three years, either get so-so at it or get really good at it and move on to something else. Languages are a wonderful thing to chase. When I was young, I absolutely loved studying French. It was my favorite class out of all the classes. I now am terrible at French, but the learning skills that I learned while learning French, that's a lot of a lot of learning enabled me to pick up Japanese much more quickly and I had a lot of fun learning Japanese self-development should be fun let the doubters doubt do you have any idea how many people doubted me when they were like what well, why are you learning a three-stringed Japanese instrument that's never gonna my life has changed just from learning that instrument the number of people I have met and the experience that I have had is way more valuable than just the learning. The learning is just opening the door. Just walk into the room. And the main reason for that is for me, that's what the vlog is about. Tokyo Tuesdays are an opportunity to show you guys something about Tokyo. For those hardcore, you know, Japan lovers or the people who want to see Tokyo, the people who are traveling here, who have traveled here and just kind of want to stay in touch, that's what Tokyo Tuesdays are for. That's kind of why I separate things up between Tokyo Tuesdays and the vlog. I try to save more personal stuff. Things that, things that are about me, the narrative of my life and where this adventure is headed. I try and keep that in the vlog. So, that being said, if you haven't watched... That being said, if you haven't watched the It All Starts Here video, that'll get you started. And I think I probably released a lot of stuff about myself during the Canada trip. Um, otherwise, the vlog does have a playlist. Thank you again for your interest in that. That's kind of why I separate things up between Tokyo Tuesdays and the vlog. I try to save more personal stuff. Things that are about me, the narrative of my life and where this adventure is headed. I try and keep that in the vlog. Actually, there was one more, which is, would you ever go to Australia? Of course I would. I love Australia. I've loved Australia since I was a child. Always wanted to go there. Actually, I used to wake up at four o'clock in the morning while I was in high school just to chat with my Australian friends on an old chat service known as ICQ. I would love to go to Australia. Okay, so that, that is the Q&A. If you've stuck around this far, thank you so much. This Q&A was supposed to be really different. Actually, I've been waiting all day to do this Q&A and ended up doing it sitting here at my desk slash table slash workspace, whatever you want to call it, because the entire day was just terrible weather out there. You guys know the way I love to do Q and A's. I love to jump from location to location, keep that scenery changing, but yeah, it was just a mix of rain and snow all day. And I just, I couldn't, I, I waited as long as I could, thought maybe it would let up at night and we could do a nighttime Q and A out there, but it's still raining. So thank you for sticking through. All that being said, um, a huge thanks to SoFlo for sending me all that stuff. That is really awesome. And again, if you are one of the people who did rent the iVideo Wi-Fi router, let me know how your experience was. I've really been like, this is working so well for me. This is my daily now. Thank you so much 
being here with me today. I, I love this. I love just sitting down and talking to you guys. I feel like it's been a while since we just sat down and did one of these. That being said, as always, and I mean as always, if you have any additional questions, please leave them in the comments below. I know this time that I actually asked you guys a lot of questions that may require answers. Feel free to answer any of those. That would actually be really nice. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new and you haven't done it yet, consider hitting that subscribe button. I would love to have you as part of this community. And I will see you on Tuesday. But honestly, what do you think about something like photo prints?